Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my December TBR. There isn't any particular rhyme or reason to this TBR other than my buddy read with Amanda. Everything else was stuff that I literally grabbed off the shelves a minute ago. I was like, man, I need a TBR. What the fuck am I gonna read? As usual, I apologize if you hear any clanging and banging. It is my neighbor, presumably continuing their clock dancing studies. The first book on my list is Holidays, which is me and Amanda's buddy read for the month. Um, Amanda picked it. It is obviously because we're, yep. So the live show will be on her channel the last Saturday of the month, which uh, I don't know what, what the date of that is right now, but oh, following. I can find out. Boxing Day, the 26th, the day after Christmas. Yeah, so Holidays is a, uh, it's by Christina Lauren. Never read anything by Christina Lauren. This, I believe, is kind of like, I mean, it is a romance that's Christmas centered, but it's also a Groundhog Day death. Thing where like she keeps dying and, and reliving the same day but I think the day that she's reliving is Christmas day and um yep <laughs> I'm not gonna lie this sounds pretty intriguing like a contemporary Christmas romance like normally I'd be like groundhog day death Christmas romance mm. the next book is the bone season by Samantha Shannon I've actually read this before I've also read the mime order but um I never finished reading the books that are out so far in the bone season series uh I read the first two and haven't read the third one the the song rising because I just didn't feel like it at the time plus then there was no word on the next book coming out at all anyway so I felt zero urgency but um the next book is finally coming out the mask falling in January I think so I don't think I'll catch up on a reread before the next one comes out but I'm like oh back in the bone season game I need to reread that because I forgot most of it the bone season if you haven't read it or heard of it I quite liked it it is kind of a tough one to get into it doesn't it does precisely zero hand holding it is a kind of a dystopian ish type of situation where this is like London and the I guess not too distant future or an alternate London I'm not super clear and I don't think it was clear at the time or I've forgotten there are people with these sort of like uh what's the word it's not psychic the back of the book supplied me with the word clairvoyant. She's a clairvoyant. There's different levels of clairvoyancy, different things you can do with your clairvoyancy. And there's like this like secret subworld of London and this criminal underworld of London and all these clairvoyants and the different levels of the clairvoyance. And again, the book, the book has like uh, charts and glossaries and like, here's like all the orders of like the different kinds of clairvoyancy. I never pay attention to shit like that. <laughs> If you dive right in and just read it, which is what I did, you can kind of pick it up along the way, but it's tough because it's just like, it throws you into the middle. There's like slang and jargon and all of this stuff that it does not explain to you ever. Like you can look at the glossary, you can look at the chart. Other than that, it's just going to tell the story. It was quite interesting, quite unusual, quite unique. Found the characters compelling and the concept engrossing. And I would, I just need to refresh myself so that I can read the next book when it comes out. The next book I have is The Black Cauldron by Lloyd Alexander. I read The Book of Three, um, which is the first book in the Chronicles of Prydain a couple months ago. I've been wanting to read the Chronicles of Prydain since I was a kid, basically, because I love the movie The Black Cauldron, which is Disney's version of kind of the whole Chronicles. Uh, they called it The Black Cauldron, which is the second book. I really loved the first book, which is The Book of Three. I really, really, really loved it. Like it was it had all the charm of the movie that I loved so much, but more of it and more quirks and, and more loveliness and more magic. And it was just like everything I loved about the movie, but like to the max turned up to 11. So I'm really excited to continue on and read The Black Cauldron. The next book is the, the second book in the bind up known as Rise of Empire. The Riria Revelations, the three books in the Riria Revelations, each one is actually a bind up of two. So the Riria Revelations is in effect actually six books, not three. So I read the first book that is in this bind up earlier this year and that was Nifron Rising, right? Am I right? <laughs> I think I'm right. Yeah, Nifron Rising. And then the book that I now knew would need to read is The Emerald Storm. The first bind up book is Theft of Swords, which contains two books as well. I read that a couple years ago. It's just a really sort of traditional, fun fantasy, adult fantasy that follows kind of two thieves, uh, Hadrian and Royce, who have this sort of great bantery friend relationship. And there's nothing particularly mind bogglingly original or unique about the world of the of the Rieria books. Um, it's very, very traditional fantasy. But there's just really great kind of like character development and this like friendly banter thing and adventure uh it's just like a fun fantasy <laughs> with some great characters like it, it's not earth shattering in any way it's just a good time and i'd like to finish this so that i could finally pick up the heir of Navron, which is the third in the re revelations and then i think i've mentioned a few times about 
the saga of me purchasing Riria books because I bought Age of Myth and then found out that was a prequel to the Riria Chronicles. I bought all the Riria Chronicles and then found out the Riria Chronicles were a prequel series to the Riria Revelation. So I own like 50 billion Michael J. Sullivan books because I kept buying them as I discovered what they were actually prequels to. So gotta get through these bad books. I'm enjoying them. I just, I need to read them. <laughs> Next book is a very recent purchase. Like it arrived five minutes before I started filming this. <laughs> and there's Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I never before really wanted to read this. It sounded, I just kind of pictured it as being kind of like Twilight Light and I've never been interested in Twilight, but I heard recently somebody talking about it and it sounds like it's a lot more sort of like dark academia with like witches and vampires and it has like this pretentiousness that I am absolutely here for. Like I love The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So this sounded to me like The Secret History but with vampires and witches. Kind of salivating at the thought of that. I might hate it. It's very long and if it's gonna be too romancy, like too like angsty and dramatic on that side of things, I won't. I don't think I'll like it but um I am hopeful that I will like this and if I do that's lucky and fortunate because it's a completed series. It came out a while ago, so I can just chew my way through the whole series if I like it. Next is a relatively recent acquisition, and that is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Earlier this year, I read uh, The Guest List by Lucy Foley, which I also got from Book of the Month. And this, I don't know if it just came out, um, because The Guest List just came out. I don't know if she had two books come out this year. I have no fucking idea. But I really liked The Guest List, and The Hunting Party is also a closed circle isolated mystery that takes place, I believe, at a cabin or a mansion or something, but around Christmas time. 30 somethings from Oxford meet to welcome in the new year together. So just after Christmas in the Scottish Highlands. Now one of them is dead and another one of them did it. So it's like, and then there were none, but like in the snow. So it sounds like the perfect December read. I'm very excited. Next up, I have The Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I am over two for Naomi Novik. I hated Deadly Education and I hated Uprooted, but I own this goddamn gorgeous edition of Spinning Silver. And I've had so many people tell me that even though I liked those other, or disliked those other two, that they still think that I would like Spinning Silver. So we're gonna try it. And if I don't like this, well then I think I can, that'll be the final nail in the Naomi Novik coffin. She truly is not an author for me. I hold out hope that I could still like this despite having hated the other two books I read. Because each book has been quite different. My issues with them were quite different. So I may end up hating this as well, but I suspect if I do hate it, it will be for yet an entirely different set of reasons than the other two. <laughs> and the last book on my TBR is Entreat Me by Grace Draven. I've read this two or three times already. It's not, my, my favorite favorite is Radiance, but Entreat Me takes place around winter solstice. And I do quite like it. Not as much as Radiance, but almost as much as Radiance. And it's just a cozy winter solstice -y fantasy. -y. Oh, if you don't know what it is at all, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling where uh, I mean, it's a Grace Draven book. I tend to like Grace Draven books. Uh, it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Takes place in Winter Solstice, but kind of the twist on it, I guess. The main character who you really follow, she's the older sister of this really young, beautiful girl. There, she's like I think they're half sisters. The young girl is in love with this very handsome prince, and so she's kind of her chaperone. And the Beast character is the sort of handsome prince's father, who is like cursed and deformed. And so it's kind of this like they kind of hit it off because she's there to chaperone. And it's his son. So like she's her sister, not her mother. But like it's kind of that dynamic of them watching the youngins and like <laughs> and being like, she's a widow. And and there's clearly a story as to why Daddy Dearest is cursed and disfigured. But they're sort of mature adults. This isn't like a first love, young love Stockholm Syndrome situation. Like she insists on staying there to chaperone. And it's during winter solstice. So there's like all the winter solstice vibes uh, like a very earthy Christmas, which is kind of my favorite kind of style of Christmas, having just a lot of like evergreen boughs and a Yule log and like very that kind of vibe, much more so than the holly jolly, deck the halls with tinsel and money type of Christmas. <laughs> so it's just, it's a really, I just love the vibe of Entreat Me. I really quite, like I like Abrishan and Ildiko and Radiance better, but I do really, really like Louvain and, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Ballard. And this book, um, I think, I just, I, I appreciate, I always like the characters that Grace Draven writes. She tends to write very, very three-dimensional, mature, interesting characters that I like to hang out with and follow. And so this will be at least the third time that I'm reading this. It's become kind of a tradition with me. So I'm like looking forward to this. Alrighty, that does it for my TBR. Let me know in the comments down below what you'll be reading in December. If you're reading any of the books that I'm reading, if I've now inspired you to pick up any of these books, uh, as usual, I will have linked down below all the books that I'll be reading so you can get them if you want to. 
please uh, join me and Amanda in reading Holidays so that you can chat with us during the live show. It's always more fun if y'all have read it. Um, yeah, let me know all the things and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I post videos on Saturdays, other times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So I'll see you when I see you. Bye.